So let's look at a quick run through the 10 major signs before the day of judgment. So we mentioned last week the three fit and trials that will be will have a huge effect and will affect people until the last one separates people into believers and hypocrites. Then the Mahdi obviously will come out during that time period. And after people pledge to the Mahdi, and the Prophet says, if you hear of him, pledge even if you have to crawl over snow. If you have to crawl over the snow, make sure you get to him. All right. And when uh, when that happens, the Prophet said he will rule for seven years. So another hadith mentions seven to nine years. He will rule and he will fill the earth with justice and he will distribute wealth. But the Dajjal uh, emerges during this time period. And before the Dajjal emerges, the Prophet mentioned three years. The, year, the first year before the emergence of the Dajjal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the sky to withhold one third of its rain and the earth to withhold one third of, of its vegetation. In the second year, Allah will command the, the heavens or the sky to withhold half its rain and the earth half its vegetation. And then in the third year, the Prophet says, Allah will command the sky, the sky or the heaven, the clouds, yani, to withhold all of its rain, the Prophet says, and it will not rain a single drop on earth and the and the vegetation will not grow, not a single plant will grow all over the earth and all vegetation will die and all hoofed animals will die except for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Then the Mahdi emerges when there is this famine and starvation and, and sorry, not the Mahdi, the Dajjal. Initially, he tells people he claims to be a prophet and then he tells people that I am your Lord, the one who created you. And then the Prophet said, describes him a lot, and we, as we said last year, uh, last uh, week, he even said Ibn Qatan is the one who looks like him. He's got the same figure and everything. He is a human being. He has two eyes, not one. He is not a cyclops. Human beings have two eyes in their head. And if one of them is non-functional, you say you have one eye. It doesn't mean you're a cyclops. Yeah, you've seen that video on, on YouTube. This Turkish baby was born and has one eye henna. And the question is, is, they put this uh -huh -huh nasheed in the background and they wrote, is this the Dajjal? <laughs> like, it's bad enough for these two parents that their baby was born with one eye and now they have to find a video of him on YouTube being uh, accused of being the Dajjal. So the Dajjal has two eyes, one of them being bad and he has curly hair and he has as white as complexion and he is of the, towards the shorter end of being height, uh, of his height but not He's like not short, short, but he's not tall either. And then he travels the earth. He, the Prophet said when he first emerges, the first day will be the length of a year. How many hours are in a year? That's how many hours and the length of that day. Some scholars said, it, because it's a very difficult day, it will seem like a long day, like a year. Others said, no, it will be exactly as long as a year as long. Because the companions, their first question was, how will we pray? And he said, you will estimate it. You know, you pray Fajr and then after six or seven hours there's Dhuhr, you'll wait six, seven hours, then you pray Dhuhr, then you'll pray Asr, just like that. Then uh, the second day will be as long as a month. And then the, second, the third day will be as long as a week. And then the fourth day will be as long as the rest of your days. And the scholars say it gets shorter because the falsehood by its nature is that it gets weaker. So he's getting weaker and weaker. He will travel the earth in 40 days and he, there will not be a village except that, or city except that he will enter that city except Mecca and Medina. He cannot enter the two. He cannot enter the city of Mecca and Medina. He, cannot, he can enter the other cities, but he cannot enter Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So he can enter the city, but not Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Then the Prophet says he will come to Medina and he will stand at the top of one of the mountains and he will point to his followers and he will say, do you see that white palace? That is the Masjid of Ahmad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's amazing that when the Prophet spoke this, his Masjid was brown and earth tone colors. And how would he know that his Masjid is going to become white? Look at satellite images of the Masjid al Nabawi now. And it's white. And from, from space, it's white. And the Prophet said, he will say, do you see that white palace? That is the Masjid of Ahmad. And because he can't enter Medina, then there will be three tremors and every hypocrite, male or female, will leave Medina and they will join the army of the Dajjal. The Prophet said, if you hear of him, run away. 
Don't do anything else. Run away. You can't kill him because you already know only Isa alayhi salam can kill him. All right? You can't convince him to change his mind because you took a class on persuasion, مثلا. <laughs> it's like as useless as trying to convince your qareen, your non-Muslim jinn that's with you the whole time. It's as useless as trying to convince him to become Muslim. And you sit in the room by yourself. Ya <laughs> We'll pray together. It's useless. So what happens? Uh, the Prophet said, if you hear of him, run. And as I mentioned last week, people will tie their family members to their home so they don't go and join the Dajjal. The Prophet said, a man will, will hear of the Dajjal and he will be confident in his Iman. Like, I, there's no way I'm going to believe a man is Allah. And he will go there and he'll be convinced and he will follow him. That's why he said, run away. You don't know. Believers will follow, non-believers will follow him, and he will produce things. He will, he will first of all, he will command uh, an, an area of the, uh, of the earth, yani a land, and every precious gem, metal underground will come up. The Prophet said, like a swarm of bees, it will follow him. He will command it to rain, it will rain instantly, vegetation will grow instantly, and the, the animals will eat from it, and their others will fill instantly. And so the people of the village will believe in him. Then he'll go to another village, and he'll show them the rivers and the rain and all that, and they will refuse to believe in him. And he will leave them in a more difficult situation, more drought, more famine. Then the Prophet said he will come with a river of fire and a river of water at a time when you need water. And he will say, you know, if you believe with me, in me you can drink from this water. If you don't believe in me, this fire. And the Prophet says, his advice to us, he said, close your eyes and drink from the fire. It will be water. It looks like fire. The scholar said, why did he say close your eyes? Because you can't put your face in fire as you're staring at it. Close your eyes so you don't see it and put your face in that. It will be actual cool water. And those are the believers. And then, of course, we're moving quickly. Then he gets aggressive and he, first, he's not killing anyone. He is just testing people and the shayateen will assist him. By the way, in the story of the Dajjal, you don't hear about the Illuminati or anything else. Okay? So, that they, oh, they will pave the way. What paved the way? Do you see pave the way in this story? So, the shayateen will assist him. So, he will tell a person, if I bring your mother and father back to life, will you believe that I'm your Lord? And the man says, if you could do that, I'll believe. And then two shayateen, the hadith says, will take the form of his parents. So you will see your mother who died 25 years ago, exactly her, in the flesh, and same sound, and she'll say, my son, listen, I've, I've died, I know where I'm from, I've been there. He is your Lord, believe in him, and the person will believe in him. And then he cut, then there's the incident of the, one of the greatest martyrs in the sight of Allah. The Prophet describes a young man brimming with youth, and he will come, and the people of the Dajjal will capture him. They say, do you believe that the Dajjal is our Lord? He will say, no. So they will take him to the Dajjal. And the Dajjal will say, do you believe that I'm your Lord? He will say, no. So then he will cut him in half. And he will cut him in two separate halves and walk between the two halves. Then he will call him back to life. So he will come back together and come back to life. And then the hadith describes that he will be smiling. And he will say, now I am even more sure that you are the Dajjal. And the scholars say, how does he know? How is he even more sure? Because he knew the hadith. That's why it's important to understand this. He's like, oh my God, I heard about this at Friday Night Lights and I didn't know I was the guy. That, I am that guy. That's why he smiles like, oh, I read about myself. So then the Dajjal now tries to, to kill him, tries to cut his neck, but it will become of brass. Now, there's something interesting here. What, and so he can't cut his neck. The Dajjal can't cut his neck. This is very embarrassing for him because his believers think he is Allah. Astaghfirullah. He is God who created this guy. Now he can't kill him. Very embarrassing. But what's interesting, I always think about why, why is it that his knife just wouldn't work? Why does his neck change to brass? Because that's visible. Everyone can see that his neck changed to an actual metal. And now nothing works. So now this is embarrassing for the Dajjal. So he takes him and throws him into a fire. But the Prophet said he will actually be throwing him into a Jannah and he will be of the greatest martyrs in the sight of Allah. So now 
The Dajjal has an army, so the Mahdi, even though he knows he cannot kill the Dajjal, he prepares an army to resist the Dajjal. And that's why I always say there's a lesson in that. The Mahdi knows he can't kill the Dajjal, but he still does his part, you know? So same thing for us. We don't sit and wait for the Mahdi. That's paralyzing. You sit and wait for the Mahdi, he's gonna do the work. No, you do your work. Even if it's something the Mahdi can do, you do your part, you resist. So the Mahdi puts together an army and there will be a battle between the believers and the forces of the Dajjal. And the battle will be so severe that if a bird flies over the battlefield from the heat and from all the projectiles, it would drop dead. And one third of the army will be martyred. And the Prophet said they, they will be of the greatest martyrs in the sight of Allah. And one third of the army will uh, run away. And the hadith says Allah will never forgive them. And one third lives to fight the next day. So the next day they fight and they break into that. Martyrs, those who run away, those who remain. You see, the group is getting cleaner and cleaner also. Then on the fourth Fajr, so like, uh, or maybe it's the third day of battle. So basically what happens, then uh, like I described earlier, they make the Iqamah, they're about to pray, pray Fajr, and then they see the sky open up. And the Prophet describes they will see Isa salam descending with a hand on the wing of each angel. He's with two angels, hand on this wing, hand on this wing, and he's descending. Prophet describes his hair. And every time he describes him, he describes his hair. And when he describes the Dajjal, he describes his hair. So that people don't be confused between Al-Masih, Isa ibn Maryam, and Al-Masih, Al-Dajjal. This guy has curly hair. This guy has long, soft hair. It's as if he just came out of a shower, basically, or a bath, where your hair is still limp and wet. Always describe his hair like that, long and limp. And then even describe the color of the garment he's wearing, lightly yellow, and a light yellow on it, and he comes down like this. When he descends down, imagine seeing that. Oh, amazing, huh? seeing two angels with their own eyes and seeing Isa alayhi salam. So when he lands, the believers, they leave the prayer lines and they rush to him. And the Prophet said, he will wipe on people's faces and tell them their, their place in Al-Jannah. Wipe on your face, tell them your place in Al-Jannah. Wipe on your face. And I always say, imagine missing that Fajr. <laughs> you come back, your roommate is still sleeping. He's like, hey, you missed Fajr. He's like, yeah, I'll make it up. No, Habibi, you we saw angels, ya akhi. Isa told us our place in Al-Jannah. So then Al-Mahdi would say, Taqaddam ya ruh Allah, and he will push him like from this shoulder here. He'll, tell the, he'll say, the prayer was, the qama was made for you. And the scholars say a number of things. Number one, Isa alayhi salam prays behind the Mahdi to indicate, I am not coming as a prophet, but I has come, I'm coming as a follower of your prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the scholar said something interesting, that Isa alayhi salam is a prophet and the Sahabi. Yes, he qualifies Sahabi, someone who met the Prophet ﷺ while he was alive. He met him during the Isra and Mi'raj journey and believed in him. And when the Prophet ﷺ died, he was still a believer in him. So he's a Sahabi. <laughs> and then someone asked me once, do the people who saw Isa become Tabi'een? No, <laughs> they don't become Tabi'een. So uh, that, that's one. Two, to, to, because the scholar said, Al Mahdi has Al Quran and Isa السلام, has the Injil. And which one is superior? No doubt. So he prays behind the Mahdi, then we don't hear anything else about the Mahdi. But he comes as a warrior, not turn the other cheek or all this other. He comes as a warrior. The Prophet said he can kill the Dajjal just by looking at him. He said, if he looks at him, if he looks at him, he will dissolve just like salt dissolves in water. So he can kill him just by looking at him, but he doesn't kill him by looking at him. He takes a spear and he chases him. Oh man, there's so many interesting things. Like where Isa alayhi salam comes down is a very interesting story. Comes down near, should we go into this? There's so little thought. He comes down near the white minaret in the eastern side of Damascus. In the year 741 after the Hijrah, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah says, the Christians in Damascus, with no right, destroyed a minaret for the masjid in Damascus. So the ruler, as a punishment, made them rebuild it from their own money. So they rebuilt it from a white stone or white marble. And Ibn Kathir and others were alive when they saw that, they were like, wow, 
a white minaret on the eastern side of Damascus. Google white minaret, you'll see it today. It's still standing. So it's so, the irony is beautiful. Like Isa alayhi salam, that the Christians claim to follow, will come down on the side of the Muslims at the site that you paid for from your own pocket. It's so in your face, I don't know. So basically, then, uh, but let's skip, let's go to where Isa alayhi salam takes a spear and he chases the Dajjal. And he catches up to him near the eastern door of Lud in Palestine. And then he stabs him with the spear and he raises the spear and he shows the blood to everybody. Why? Because if he just looks at him until he dissolves, his followers are going to say, nonsense. Oh, our Lord left the worldly big body and he ascended and went back to the heaven, right? But if they see blood, they're going to say, oh, that wasn't God. God can't be killed by a spear. And they will realize that when he lifts that blood up in the spear, they will scatter everywhere. The army of the Dajjal scatters everywhere. And that's when the Muslims go after them and they finish them off. And then the people, then the hadith says, فَبَيْنَمَاهُمْ كَذَلِكَ While they're in that situation, Allah announces to them that I have let loose servants of mine that nobody can withstand. Uh, because Isa alayhi salam, he comes as a warrior. Before killing the Dajjal, he kills with his breath. He comes as a warrior and it's the next day of battle, right? So when the battle starts from his breath, everything until the horizon, every soldier until the horizon dies. He just imagine like dominoes. Like he looks this way and just like dominoes. Until as far as his eye can see, people drop. Imagine a soldier like that in your army. You know, he's blowing this way, blowing this way. They're getting close from this side. You're like, uh, Isa, Zakalakhir, just look this way. He looks this way, tuk, 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 people drop. So look at the power that he has here. Then he kills the Dajjal. But even though he could kill people with his breath until the horizon, Allah tells him nobody can handle them. Which is beautiful because it's, it's still saying he's not God, he's not divine. Because even though he can kill people in this magnificent way, a few moments later or a little while later, he's told nobody can handle them, which indicates he's not divine because now you have to hide. فَأَسْرِ بِعِبَادِي إِلَى الطُّورِ So he takes the few believers who are with him and they go hide into the Mount of At-Tur. The scholar said, how will the Mount of At-Tur fit everybody? Two opinions. One says Allah will make it fit everyone. The second opinion says it might be another mountain at that time that is called At-Tur and they will hide there. Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come out they will come out and they will break through the physical barrier, not a figurative barrier. You all read Surah Al-Kahf every Friday. Is that barrier actual or physical? يعني, if, uh, figurative. It, it's a, is it physical or figurative? If you tell me it's figurative, but why is Allah describing the materials and the process of building something figurative? Ituni Zubar al-Hadid. Zubar يعني, clumps kida of iron so we got iron and then ufrigh alayhi qitara which is mo, uh, which is copper which people used to mix the two because copper oxidizes i mean and it saves the iron from rusting and type what does copper mean figuratively what is qalam fukhu blow what is that what is blowing figuratively what is iron chunks of iron figuratively what is this said phys figuratively, it's an actual barrier. They break through and they come out angry because you're the ones who trapped us. So they begin to kill everybody on earth. I'm gonna go super fast now. Isa alayhi salam and the believers, they wait until they're hungry and they're poor. The Prophet says, until the head of an ox to one of them is more beloved to them than a thousand dinars for one of you. That's how poor they are. Then finally, and they're just making dua, making dua to Allah, that's all they can do. And even though Ya'juj and Ma'juj scour the earth, they'll never find them. And the scholar said, just like you believed in Ya'juj and Ma'juj without being able to see them, your reward is that they will not be able to see you. So then they, a young man volunteers to go see what's going on, if they're gone or not. And they all bid him farewell. They expect him to die. And he goes out and Ya'juj and Ma'juj are dead everywhere. Because when they were making dua, Allah sent a nadaf, these small worms that enter into their bodies and they go into their brain. 
the Prophet said, they die the death of one man. Yani when you have billions of people or millions of people, everyone has a different immune system. So today this guy, his throat itches and he coughs. Tomorrow he dies. Then tomorrow the next guy starts, <clears throat> I think I'm coming down with something, then he dies. But the Prophet said, they all die the death of one man. So these millions, how does one man die? Like this, all these millions die the same instant. All of them just drop, shoo, like that. So he goes out and finds all the dead bodies. Then he lets Isa and the believers, alayhi salam, and the believers know that they're all dead. Then they come out and then, but there are dead bodies everywhere and the whole world reeks. So they make dua to Allah Azjil again. And the Prophet says, Allah will send birds that have necks like camels, long necks. And they will carry the bodies of Yajuj and Majuj to where Allah, wherever Allah decrees. Others, other scholars said, or narrations mentioned, they will throw them out in the ocean. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a thick, heavy rain that will clean, the cleanse the earth. So it looks like a mirror shining and bright. And it will be said to the earth, it will be said, return your thamara, thamarataki, waruddi barakataki. Yani return your fruit and return your original blessings. And the Prophet described that a group of men can eat one pomegranate and they can even get shelter under its skin. That one cow will produce enough milk for the entire village and one sheep for the whole family. And this is true peace on earth. There is not a single liar, not a disbeliever. Isa alayhi salam broke the cross symbolically and he killed the pig sim symbolically. Some scholars said not a single pig will remain on earth. Finally, you don't have to say, oh, is it put on the same grill as pork? None of that stuff, okay? Others said symbolically he will kill the pig and uh, the people will only see true dreams and a child will put its hand in the burrow of the snake and it will not bite him and predatory animals will not uh, attack the cows and the sheep. It's just the best time to ever be alive. And the Prophet said, a sajda will be better than the whole world and everything in it. And you just imagine that. You make sujood, you're not in a rush to get out of it, to run to the market or to do this. Just that's it. Only the best of people are alive. And then Isa salam remains for a number of years and he makes hajj and he visits the Prophet salam and he gives him salam and the Prophet responds to salam. Then he is, uh, some scholars said, he will probably get married, we don't know, and it's not acceptable to make dua <laughs> to be his wife. <laughs> Scholars actually mention that, that because it's, people say, can I ask Allah to be the wife of Isa when he returns? They said it's not from the adab of dua to ask, Ya Allah, I want an orange house in the Jannah. But if you get a purple one, you're like, I don't want it. It's not good adab. So he will be buried. This, the scholars had this, uh, yeah, and let's call it a theory or an idea for a long time. There's no clear evidence for it, but they believe that he will be buried possibly with the Prophet and Abu Bakr and Umar because there's a space for one body there. And they said, most likely people will think, let's bury him with the Prophet Allah Azza wa knows best. And then, so when he dies, the Muslims will pray over him and bury him. Then we've got generations and we start to see evil come again and wickedness come again and the shaitan's influence rise up again and killing and lying and cheating. There's, see, people forget the timeline. There's gonna be yani, the timeline, there are generations and the beast emerges and marks people and then generations come and then the smoke and then, so when Islam then disappears and there's no, the Quran, there's not a mushaf on earth it will be lifted. All this is very end of times. The Kaaba will be destroyed. Very end of times. The Prophet said, يُخَرِّبُ الْكَعْبَةَ ذُو السُّوَيْقَتَيْنِ مِنَ الْحَبَشَةِ A man by the name of ذُو uh, السُّوَيْقَتَيْنِ By the description of having two bow legs. And the Prophet described him with small ears and physically de a deformed body. And he will destroy the Kaaba. The Prophet says, كَأَنِّي بِهِ it's as if I'm looking at him right now. يَقْلَعُهَا حَجَرًا حَجَرًا He's taking it apart, stone by stone, brick by brick. Nobody stops him. Yes, because nobody knows what the Kaaba is. This is very end of times. No one has a clue. So he destroys the Kaaba, nobody stops him. And Allah doesn't stop him because what's the use of stopping him? Allah stopped Abraha and his elephants because if they destroyed the Kaaba, they would have threatened its existence. They would have switched it to the one in Yemen. But 
Here, Allah's not going to protect the Kaaba. There's no need for it. Nobody knows what it is. This is very end of time. So sometimes people get confused. That's because they don't pay attention to the timeline. But basically, uh, after that, we've got three signs so far. The Dajjal, Isa, Ya'juj, and Ma'juj. These three happen in order. There's no dispute about the order. You saw how this, they were attached to each other, this, right? That's why when somebody says Ya'juj and Ma'juj are out, La Habib. Unless we're Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they're not out, okay? Um, then there will be a landslide, no detail here. A landslide in the east, a landslide in the west, and a landslide in the Arabian Peninsula. We all know what a landslide is. is are we talking about a little sinkhole in a, in a neighborhood in Guatemala? No, it's so major that everybody recognizes it because one of the major signs. So that now we're up to six landslide east, west, Arabian Peninsula, and the first three. Then the sun rises from the west that we talked about and the beast that, that emerges from the earth. And the Prophet said, whichever one comes first, the other one will come right after. Then the smoke. And the smoke is the actual physical thick, heavy smoke that fills everything. The roads, every room, every house, everywhere. And, and when you inhale the smoke, the believer gets the sniffles. But the disbeliever becomes blackened and he becomes bloated. And so it will label them like that. And then after that is the great fire that gathers all the people to the land of resurrection. So it's a fire that's bringing people. Some scholars say from all around the earth. Others say just from like, I don't know, maybe like, like the Middle East parts of Asia will be pushing people. It's like. Imagine it like lava almost. It's traveling with people. Prophet said, تَقِيلُوا حَيْثُ قَالُوا yani Wherever they stop to take a nap, the fire stops moving. When they spend the night, the fire stops moving. When they get up next day and start moving, it moves with them. What if a guy says, I notice when we stop, it stops. I'm not going anywhere. That's what you're thinking of, Kaleem, right? Prophet said, مَنْ تَخَلَّفَ عَنْهَا أَكَلَتْهُ Whoever stays behind, it eats him up, it consumes him. So you got to keep moving. And then until we get to the horn bl being blown into, and the Prophet of course, many hadith describing what happens when the angel blows into the horn. First one, everyone on earth dies. And then the angels, their soul is taken, and then the angel of death, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one anywhere in the universe. And he says, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom is the dominion today? To whom is the dominion today? And then he answers himself by himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because there's nobody else. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then he brings the angel of death back to life. Then the angels back to life. Then the horn is blown into the second time and people are standing. It's called Yom Al Qiyamah because people are standing and they're looking around completely back to, to life, conscious. This is me, my same body. And they're standing there for, waiting for the judgment to begin. That part is another story, another description. But for the most part, these are the major signs before the day of judgment. Um, the minor signs are many. Some of them have happened. Some are happening. Some are going to happen. But uh, are, the, are we at the end of times? One more time. We said if we look at where we are in the age of the earth, we're towards the end of the age of the earth. The description of our world today, is it the description of the world where all these things happen? No, not at this moment. Could it change within a few years? Absolutely. Anything major, even what's happening in Palestine now can be part of the beginning of that world where the Mahdi comes out or where leading to the Khilafah that will happen and then the civil war, then the Mahdi, all these things. But the point is, these are all in the, the, the unseen. So... We can just look at what's going on and we can say this is possible, this is plausible, but we can't fill in the blanks as we please and we, you know, all the other games that are played online. We'll stop here, inshallah. I apologize for going so long, but thank you for listening attentively and being patient.